Bam Baini stood in front of her mirror, adjusting the delicate hairpin that crowned her ebony locks. Today was the day she would leave for the Heavenly Empress selection, a ceremony that could either revive her family's lost glory or condemn them to permanent obscurity. As she prepared, her father entered the room, his once formidable frame now marked by the weariness of years spent in quiet struggle. By knee dear, he began, his voice laced with concern. Are you certain about this? Can you please reconsider your decision to join the Heavenly Empress selection? Father, she replied gently, turning to meet his worried gaze, this isn't a matter of choice. It's an order proclaimed by the Heavenly Emperor himself. Insubordination would only bring ruin to our family. He sighed heavily, the weight of his past failures evident in his eyes. He had once been a revered general, a man who commanded respect across the empire. But when his wife fell gravely ill, he chose to stay by her side instead of following his emperor into battle. The late Heavenly Emperor had been slain by the evil beings. The celestial beings, consumed by their rage, directed their fury toward the Bam family. From that day, they had fallen from grace, their power and wealth diminishing with each passing year. Now, they struggled just to survive. Bai Ni understood his anxiety all too well. The selection could restore their honor, or destroy them completely. Forcing a smile, she tried to lighten the mood. Father, don't worry so much. It's not as if I'm thrilled about the idea of wearing heavy jewelry and pretending to be someone I'm not all day long. The life of an empress isn't exactly my dream. Then why go through with it? Her father asked, clearly puzzled. The selection is a rare opportunity, Baini explained, her tone firm. If I can prove myself there, I might secure a position as a grade 7 civil servant in the celestial palace. That would be a far more suitable path for me than playing empress. Her father's expression softened, though his tension remained. Wouldn't it be better to aim for a high-ranking official position, given your talents? There are too many responsibilities with that, she said, shaking her head. And I'd have to work overtime constantly. No, thank you. He sighed again, more in resignation than frustration. Sometimes, I can't tell if you have ambitions or not. Her mother, who had been silently watching, laughed softly. She takes after you in that way. A voice from outside interrupted them. Lady Bam by knee, please step outside and board the carriage designated for the Heavenly Empress candidates. By knee took a deep breath, turning to her father one last time. His eyes were full of love and pride, tinged with a deep-seated worry. By knee, my brave and precious daughter, he said, his voice steady despite his fears. If this is truly your resolve, I won't stop you. But remember, if the competition ever becomes too exhausting, you can always come home. You don't have to push yourself beyond your limits. Understood? Yes, father, Bai Ni replied with a reassuring smile. Her mother, holding her hands affectionately, added, Just enjoy yourself, Bai Ni. Before they could say more, the caller's voice rang out, louder this time. Lady Bam Bai Ni, please hurry outside. I promise to come back as a grade 7 civil servant. Bai Ni said with a bright smile as she walked out of the house, determination in her step. As she stepped outside, the bustling crowd waiting for her turned their attention towards her. There she is. She's finally here. A man called out, pointing in her direction. She has her mother's good looks, and she's brave and daring, just like her father, another man said with a chuckle. Bine. We'll be voting for you. You'll do great. Someone cheered from the crowd. Baini smiled and waved, thinking to herself, I should win their favor beforehand. But as she did, she caught whispers from the crowd. Look at her, begging for votes, someone sneered. How pretentious of her. Another voice added with disdain. Baini's smile faltered slightly, but she quickly regained her composure, feeling the sting of their fake remarks. She knew better than to take them at face value. As she reached the waiting carriage, her eyes flinched momentarily, but she held her head high, glaring at those who spoke ill of her. Please get in the carriage now, a lady instructed, opening the carriage door. As Bai Ni climbed into the carriage, she heard more whispers from the crowd. It's wonderful that the Heavenly Emperor is finally choosing a Heavenly Empress after seventy long years, but a girl like Bai Ni doesn't deserve to be there, someone muttered. Remember who her father is. He's a rebellious subject who let the late Heavenly Emperor die, another voice added bitterly. 
But it's not like she can excuse herself, someone else defended. All the young ladies of marriageable age were ordered to participate. I heard that Tyrant even ordered all his impending engagements to be called off, another person whispered. Baini turned her head as she stepped into the carriage, catching sight of her parents waving goodbye with cheerful faces. She forced a grin before closing the door behind her. Your name? The lady inside the carriage asked brusquely, taking roll call. It's Bam Baini, ma'am, she replied. The lady gave her a stern scan before rudely instructing, go sit in the first seat on the right. Baini quickly assessed the carriage, noting the other girls already seated. She calmly made her way to her assigned seat, feeling the weight of their lingering gazes on her. The coachman signaled the horses to move, and the carriage began its journey toward the celestial palace. I see the carriages. Here come the heavenly empress candidates, everyone. A man announced as the procession of carriages approached the palace gates. People waved as the carriages rolled by, filled with maidens destined for the celestial palace. The murmurs inside the carriage grew louder. Look at all those people. One lady whispered. Wow. I didn't think there'd be this many participants, the girl next to her responded. There should be well over 2,000 participants, another added. The conversation shifted to the current heavenly emperor, known for his stern and cold demeanor. The current heavenly emperor is infamous for being a tyrant, even among the celestial beings. Rumor has it that countless people were killed as soon as he took the throne. He even banished those close to the late heavenly emperor to the human realm, one of the girls said quietly. That's quite sad, these ladies are all joining this event in hopes of becoming that ruthless man's wife, Baini thought. We're here at the celestial palace, the lady next to Baini whispered, drawing her back to the present moment as the carriage came to a halt. Baini watched the lady beside her, noticing the cheerful look on her face. Were you talking to me? She asked, her tone calm. Yes, the lady replied, her smile unwavering. Does she not know I'm from House Bam? Baini wondered, briefly puzzled. She then turned her attention to the scenery outside the window. The other ladies in the carriage were visibly amazed by the sight before them. It's the Celestial Palace. Beautiful. One of the ladies exclaimed, her cheeks flushing with excitement. Look at how magnificent it is. You can only enter the Celestial Palace if you make it to the finals, right? Another asked, her voice filled with awe. That's what I heard too, a third lady replied, her eyes wide as they all gazed at the palace in admiration. Have a seat, everyone. The lady in charge of the carriage announced, drawing their attention away from the view. Baini's heart began to race. I really hope I can do well, she thought, placing a hand over her chest to steady herself. She knew that reaching the higher ranks in the finals would guarantee her a position as a civil servant, a crucial step for her family's future. The divine legal system was clear. Success in the heavenly empress selection could secure her employment in the celestial palace. But Baini was also aware of the challenges ahead. I'm sure I'll continue to face many difficult situations throughout the selection. Winning points will be harder for me, and people will likely treat me with hostility. I'll have to be careful every day, making sure not to step on the tiger's tail. Despite these concerns, her resolve remained unshaken. Even so, my ultimate goal is to become a grade 7 civil servant of the Celestial Palace. With that thought firmly in mind, Baini steeled herself for the trials that awaited her, determined to prove her worth and secure her place in the Celestial ranks. The carriages came to a halt in front of Camellia Hall. Candidates, please look over here. Please wave this way. A lady called out, waving enthusiastically at the carriages. A crowd had gathered outside, buzzing with anticipation. I didn't expect the event to be this grand, one of the ladies remarked, taken aback by the sheer number of people. Apparently, the storytellers have been waiting outside the homes of the promising candidates since last night, another lady responded. The storytellers, responsible for broadcasting the Heavenly Empress selection, were crucial to making the candidates known to the public. Their tales would shape the reputations of these women, and if a candidate were to become the heavenly empress, her story would continue to be told for generations. The role of the storytellers was undeniably important. Attention, everyone. You will be heading out in the order of your seats. Please get ready. The lady in charge announced loudly, snapping by knee out of her thoughts. 
she noticed the lady beside her smiling and nodding gently in her direction, signaling that it was her turn. Baini let out a quiet sigh before responding, I'm ready ma'am, as she moved gracefully toward the carriage's entrance. Please head downstairs, stand there for three seconds, and then enter Camellia Hall immediately afterward, the lady instructed. As Baini stepped out of the carriage, cameras flashed from every direction. There are so many people, she thought, momentarily stunned by the crowd's energy. The storytellers began announcing her entrance, their voices amplifying her presence. Amidst the sea of faces, Baini noticed a strange man among the storytellers, staring directly at her. Huh? What's that about? She wondered, watching him closely. To her surprise, the man winked at her. What the heck? Baini thought, unimpressed and slightly annoyed. He must be insane. How dare he try to make eyes at a heavenly empress candidate? Disgusted, she quickly drew her thumb across her neck before pointing at him with two fingers, all while wearing a smile that sent a clear message, you better watch your back. Is she threatening to kill someone? A storyteller asked, perplexed by her gesture, as others looked on in confusion. What do you think you're doing? An imperial guard's voice cut through the air, startling by knee. She flinched slightly, caught off guard. I must leave a good first impression on the storytellers. She replied with a forced smile, quickly resuming her walk. The Heavenly Empress selection was no ordinary event. A popularity poll was conducted weekly, making the storyteller's portrayal of each candidate critical. The results of this poll depended entirely on how the storytellers chose to present their stories, which could make or break a candidate's chances. Why is that candidate suddenly threatening to kill us? A storyteller whispered to another, confusion evident in their tone. Well, I might have already failed, Baini thought, feeling a knot of tension in her chest. My parents would have laughed so hard if they had seen me. She managed a small, inward smile at the thought as she walked into the hall, where the calm serenity inside momentarily took her breath away. Lady Bea Mbine, please head that way, someone called out, pointing her toward a table. What's your name, miss? A man at the table asked as she approached. I'm Baini from Housebam she replied. He scanned his list, then nodded. Ah, here it is. Please tie this name tag to your dress and wait in the main yard, he instructed, handing her the tag. As Baini stepped into the main yard, she began to scan the crowd, wondering where her friend Gyoseal might be. Don't tell me House Bam is participating too? A lady sneered as she noticed Baini's name tag. How shameless of her, another added, both laughing at Baini. Baini glared at them but then laughed inwardly. How pathetic, she thought dismissively. As she looked around, she noticed a group of ladies lighting up the mood among themselves. I knew it, they're from Nolhyangjin, she thought, her expression brightening. Then she spotted Hei Orium, a striking figure from the Hay House. She's so gorgeous, Baini thought, her face flushing slightly. House Hay really lives up to its name, she thought. Oh right, I need to find Jio Seal she reminded herself. Scanning the yard again, she finally spotted a familiar face standing alone behind a tree. Jio Seal, she called out waving, but her friend didn't seem to hear her, looking lost in her thoughts. Woon Jio Seal, Baini called again, this time with a smile. She was about to walk over when a man's voice interrupted. Ladies, please stand according to your carriage number, he announced. With a slightly tense look, Baini turned towards Jio Seal, still smiling. Jio Seal, see you later. She called out, drawing her friend's attention. All right, Jio Seal replied, smiling and waving back. The candidates arranged themselves as instructed, but confusion soon set in. There was no official to address them, and the murmurs grew louder. Huh? Why is it taking so long? Baini wondered aloud, watching the ladies around her murmur among themselves. Did something go wrong? They've gathered all the Heavenly Empress candidates here, so why are the judges suddenly holding a meeting? She thought, noticing two judges speaking quietly to each other. This doesn't make any sense. What could be the matter? Are they discussing some kind of classified information? What are they talking about? Unbeknownst to everyone in the main yard, a strange man stood atop a tree, observing the scene with a smirk. This is proceeding rather amusingly. I wonder who will be the first to notice, he mused, his eyes scanning the candidates below. 
During the Heavenly Empress selection, storytellers must serve as witnesses to the entire event. Their role is crucial. They must inform the people of the heavenly realm about the trials a candidate endures before finally becoming the heavenly empress. This is established as law in the heavenly realm. As Bai Ni surveyed her surroundings, she noted that only the candidates were present. The competition hasn't officially begun yet. An event as important as this one wouldn't be so poorly organized. This must be part of a test. Or maybe someone is observing us, she thought, analyzing the situation. Is someone really watching us? She wondered. Her eyes caught sight of a strange man perched atop a treetop. Huh? Am I seeing things? Is that a man standing on top of a tree? What's he doing there? She questioned silently. His clothes suggest he's a high-ranking military officer, but I can't see his face clearly. If only I were someplace higher, Baini mused, stretching subtly to get a better view. The man glanced at her, and she realized he knew she had spotted him. Wait. I think our eyes just met. Who could he be? Baini thought, her curiosity piqued. Ladies, please place a little more distance between each other, someone announced, pulling Baini's attention back to the line. Oh right. We should stand a bit apart, she muttered. It's too cramped here. Can you please step back a little? One lady pleaded amidst the cluster. I can't. There's hardly any more space left. Another responded. How much more do we have to move? It's so crowded. Someone else complained. That man. Huh? He disappeared, Baini realized, glancing back to the tree where the man had been standing just moments ago. Where did he go? She wondered, trying to spot him again. Ah, it's starting, she whispered as someone began addressing the crowd. The human realm is becoming more corrupt by the day. Brutal crimes are on the rise, and more people are suffering from contagious diseases. The previous heavenly emperor has passed away, but thankfully he left behind an heir, sparing the world from being engulfed in darkness, a man read loudly from a scroll. All of you are standing here today in hopes of becoming the bride of the honorable new heavenly emperor. One of you will be chosen as the heavenly empress, who will rule the heavenly realm for the next 1,000 years. His majesty is the only heavenly emperor in the entire universe, and he needs someone to be his perfect partner and wife. Furthermore, this chaotic world needs a beautiful rack. We'd now like to see this rack from you all, he announced to the crowd of ladies. Rack refers to the inner energy possessed by every celestial being. While the size and hardness of a rack are determined at birth, its color may change depending on one's personality. When one manifests a rack as a formless melody, it is referred to as playing the rack. In the heavenly realm, everyone has their unique way of playing the rack, often appearing as if they were playing an instrument. All right, each of you has been given a flower pot. You are expected to grow life in this pot in whichever form you desire. Please get ready at once, the man announced, signaling the start of the event. This is tricky, Baini thought, feeling tense. They didn't even specify if they wanted a flower or just foliage. What should I create? She considered her options carefully. I'll go with a flower for now. But it shouldn't be a bunch of small flowers. Instead, I'll make one big blossom with perfect balance. Yes, a lotus, she decided, thinking of it as both a flower and a symbol of balance. Ladies, you may play the rack. Manifest and play your rack. The man instructed as someone beats a gong. The candidates began playing their individual racks, filling the air with their unique melodies. Baini focused on hers, concentrating as her lotus began sprouting from the flower pot. She played carefully, guiding the bloom's gentle unfolding. Yes, it bloomed, she thought, feeling a sense of accomplishment. Just then, a judge passed by her corner. Hmm, I'm impressed by your speed, he commented, glancing at her name tag. He marked a red dot on her score sheet. Oh yes. I received a red dot. Baini thought, her cheeks flushing with excitement. I wonder what the other girls made, she mused, looking around. Lady Hay Orium had created an orchid with a lovely scent. The friendly girl who had sat beside Baini in the carriage made a peony a difficult flower to create, indicating her talent. Ah, I wonder what Gyoseal created, Baini thought, curious about her friend. Soon, all eyes turned to Gyoseal as she played her rack exceptionally well. It's just as mother said. 
she's one of the most gifted geniuses with a very rare talent. There's no one here who can outperform Jio Seal, Baini thought, watching in awe as every judge gathered around Jio Seal. Jio Seal blushed, noticing the attention she had drawn, but continued to play her rack with grace and skill. The judge scored her three red dots. Von Gürsel? Did she just receive three red dots? A lady asked in shock. If her surname is Woon, she must be from House Woon, right? I didn't know there was such a gifted person in that family, another added, still in awe. Wow. I still have goosebumps, she remarked. Baini waved at Jio Seal from the crowd, smiling and giving her a thumbs up. Jio Seal breathed a sigh of relief, feeling good about her score. That night, at the candidate's residence hall, Baini couldn't sleep. I really need to sleep, but I'm too excited. The other girls must feel the same way, she thought. I should stop daydreaming and go to bed. I need to sleep early to compete with a clear head tomorrow, she told herself, trying to force herself to sleep. Come on. I need to fall asleep, she repeated, closing her eyes tightly. Suddenly, Baini heard the sound of a flute. Huh? Is that the sound of a flute? Wow. It's such a mesmerizing tune, she thought, sitting up in bed. I wonder who it is. I'd like to find out, she said before stepping out of the residence hall. I need to know who's playing that flute, she added, following the music. As she wandered, the place felt like a maze. Why does it feel like I'm lost? She thought, frustrated but still determined. The tune's coming from somewhere near here. I'm determined to find out who's playing the flute. Suddenly, she spotted a tiger in front of her. Huh? What's this? Why is there a tiger in the garden? And why is it glaring at me? She wondered, perplexed. The tiger growled and then leaped onto the roof, staring down at her. That fluffy tail. It's so adorable. I wish I could touch it once, she thought, her eyes lighting up. Without thinking, she grabbed the tail, causing the tiger to roar loudly. By knee jolted awake, almost screaming. Ha! Huh. Where did the tiger go? That was such a strange dream, she muttered, getting up to wash her face. It felt so nice to grab that tail though. Anyway, I suppose it's a good sign since I dreamed of a tiger, right? She mused. The bulletin is up. Someone shouted from outside, snapping her out of her thoughts. The bulletin? For what? Some lady screamed, looking confused. The match we had yesterday. The names of the top 100 participants have been posted. A group of girls near the bulletin board yelled. The top 10 have a separate list. Who won first place? First place? Well, that's got to be Woon Jio Seal, came the reply. Baini had a feeling Jio Seal would take first place. I wonder if my name's on the list too, she thought. She was surprised by the large crowd gathered around the bulletin. Excuse me, I'd like to move forward a little, she said, trying to make her way through. Is this the only bulletin? Someone asked nearby. I heard there's another one on the west wall. Let's go there, it's impossible to see anything here, a lady suggested, drawing others' attention. Baini sighed, feeling frustrated. This is just like yesterday. Why is everything so disorganized? She shook her head, backing away slightly, and bumped into something. Huh? What did I hit? She wondered, looking down. Then, an idea struck her. With the crowd still pushing forward, Baini climbed onto a small platform. Since we don't have much time, why don't those at the front read the names out loud? She suggested, loud enough for everyone to hear. What? A lady in front asked, turning around. Baini explained, if those in the front read the names, everyone will know who's on the list. She pointed to a woman wearing orange. You there, could you start by calling out the names starting from the top? She then addressed others nearby. You with the flower ribbon, can you check if the names are read correctly? And you with the bamboo comb, could you turn around and repeat the names to everyone else? The crowd agreed it was a good idea. When the first girl calls out a name, the second girl can confirm it and the third girl will pass it on to everyone else. All right, let's begin, she announced. Soon, the names were being called out. Dong Dongi was announced as the second place winner, and Hei Orium took third. Excitement rippled through the participants as their names were read. 
Bai Ni felt nervous as she clutched her dress, hoping to at least make it to the top 300 or 500. Then, the lady called out, 98th place is Bam Bai Ni. Bai Ni felt a wave of relief wash over her. I made it to the top 100, she thought, her face softening into a calm smile. Hello, Lady Bini. Do you remember me? A cheerful voice called out as a lady approached. Huh? Oh, you're the friendly lady I met in the carriage. Bai Ni said, recognizing her face. My name's Dongi from House Dong, the lady introduced herself warmly. You can call me Bai Ni. Pleased to meet you, Lady Dongi, Bai Ni replied with a smile. Suddenly, something clicked. Wait a minute, Dong Dongi? You're the one who ranked second? She asked, surprised. Oh, I was just lucky, Dongi said modestly, her cheeks flushing. Lucky? Judging by how beautiful your peony was, you must be one of the most talented experts. And if I remember correctly, your instrument was the hegium, which is notoriously difficult to master. What's more, with your surname being Dong, you must be from one of the top five prestigious families of the heavenly realm, like House Hei, House Dang, and House Bada. Not only are you from an eminent family, but you're also incredibly talented, Bai Ni observed. Haha, is that so? Anyway, it's very nice to meet you, Dong Yi responded excitedly. Same here, Bai Ni replied, genuinely happy. Then, Dong Yi leaned in with a curious look. Oh, and I wanted to ask you something. I noticed you were pretty skilled too. So why do you only want to be a grade 7 civil servant? Bai Ni flinched, taken aback. How did you know about that? Are you psychic? She asked, sounding surprised. No. You mentioned it yourself, Dongi replied. I did. When? Bai Ni asked, puzzled. Yesterday, when we were in the carriage. You shouted it with such determination that the other girls were startled, Dongi explained, making Bai Ni blush in embarrassment. No wonder they all stared at me like I was some kind of insect, Bai Ni murmured, feeling self-conscious. Suddenly, she felt someone's gaze on her. Turning around, she noticed Jio Seal standing at a distance. Jio Seal, congratulations on winning first place. Your manifestation was truly brilliant. Everyone was speechless while listening to your tune. Bai Ni exclaimed, running over to gently grab her hands. Oh, I was quite surprised by it too. I was very anxious back then, Jio Seal admitted, her face turning red. Bai Ni, I didn't know you were acquainted with Lady Woon Jio Seal, Dong Yi said, joining the conversation. Ah yes. She's a very close friend of mine who lives right next door, Bai Ni explained. I see. I finally understood what the manifestation of a genius sounds like yesterday, Dong Yi said warmly. Jio Seal, however, wore a sad expression. Oh right. Jio Seal, this is Dong Dong Yi. She took second place in the match. Dong Yi, this is Woon Jio Seal, Bai Ni introduced them. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lady Jio Seal. I was truly moved by your manifestation, Dongi said, extending her hand. Jio Seal turned away, refusing to shake it. My grandmother used to say the world is huge. I see why now. I never imagined there'd be so many talented people in the heavenly realm, Dongi continued cheerfully. Jio Seal frowned. Ugh, for goodness sake. What a noisy, talkative girl, she muttered. Bai Ni watched with concern. My apologies, I must have been too excited. Dongi said, retracting her hand with a warm smile. I'll see you when they place us in teams. She waved at Bai Ni, who returned the gesture with a tense smile. As Dongi left, Bai Ni turned to Jio Seal. What's wrong? Why are you being so overly sensitive? She asked, placing a hand on Jio Seal's shoulder. Jio Seal sighed, clenching her skirt. It's just. I'm feeling so much pressure. Everyone keeps calling me a genius, but I'm not that confident. My performance isn't stable, and there are so many talented people here. That's true, everyone did well yesterday. But you stood out, Bai Ni said gently. Really? Did I? Jio Seal asked, searching Bai Ni's face. Of course. You were the best, so you have nothing to worry about, Bai Ni reassured her. Jio Seal let out a sigh of relief. Well, that's a relief. Just then, an announcement called for those from the East Residence Hall to head to the cafeteria for breakfast. Bai Ni, do you want to eat breakfast with me? 
Gioseal asked hopefully. I'm sorry, but the rule is that participants from the same residence hall have to dine together. So I don't think it's possible, Baini replied, seeing the disappointment in Gioseal's eyes. But let's eat together when we're on the same team next time, she added, hugging her warmly. Promise me you won't skip breakfast, okay? Baini waved as she hurried off to the cafeteria. Jio Seal gritted her teeth in frustration. Meanwhile, Baini hurried down the corridor. Oh dear, I hope I don't miss breakfast. I just have to turn at this corner, she thought, rushing forward. Suddenly, she collided with someone coming around the corner. Ouch, that hurt. What did I crash into? She said, holding her nose in pain. Ugh, for goodness sake, watch where you're going, a man grumbled. Baini looked up to see it was the strange man she had noticed among the trees earlier. The man approached her with a sly grin. Excuse me, miss. Are you from the woods? I almost thought I rammed into a bear because your head was so hard, he joked, laughing lightly. A bear? Baini flinched at the comparison, her eyes narrowing. Ha! Huh. Then let me ask you, what are you doing in a place off-limits to men? She asked him. Who told you that men are not allowed in this area, miss? He countered, leaning towards her, his expression challenging. Well, since this is where the Heavenly Empress candidates stay, it's obvious that men can't come in here, Baini replied, her tone tense, her posture defensive. Oh, are you saying that all those Imperial Guards in the area are women? At least three of the chefs in the cafeteria are men as well. How very amusing. It looks like you're a bear who can't even distinguish a man from a woman. Relax, we don't want an angry bear on the loose here, he teased, his tone still playful but clearly aiming to get under her skin. Look, young sir. There's a mosquito on your arm, Baini said, her frustration showing as she slapped his arm with a sharp motion. It almost bit you, you should really watch out, she added, laughing at his discomfort. Why are you so strong? And mosquitoes don't exist in the heavenly realm, he muttered, rubbing his arm in pain. Are you blind? Then would you please mind explaining why this annoying mosquito keeps buzzing in front of me? Baini shot back, her tone laced with sarcasm. Ah, is that why you decided to use your bare paws to squish it to death? He retorted, the two of them glaring at each other, their annoyance simmering. Oh look, there's another one, Baini said, trying to catch him off guard again but this time he caught her hand mid-motion. He observed her closely, his eyes narrowing as he noticed something. Ooh? She covered her name in that split second? I'm impressed, he remarked, seeing her hide her name tag with her left hand. Please excuse me. I was wondering who in the world was hiding in that old tree, Baini said quickly, trying to free herself from the situation and walk away. Wait. What did you just say? An old tree? The strange man said, grabbing her arm to stop her. Oh, weren't you the man who was hiding on top of an old tree before the preliminary match yesterday? Baini asked calmly, looking him straight in the eyes. You couldn't have seen my face because of the foliage. How are you so sure it was me? He asked, his grip on her arm tightening slightly. Well, I have the sharpest eyes in my neighborhood, she replied confidently. Well, then. I should get going now, he finally said, releasing her arm and taking a step back. What an amusing young lady. She was the only one among 3,235 participants who noticed me. I should keep a close eye on her, the man said calmly, watching Baini walk away. I'd better make sure to avoid him in the future, Baini muttered to herself, hurrying in the opposite direction. After finishing their meals, the ladies were instructed to head to the main yard. The next part of the selection required participants to choose a bowl, which would place them into different teams, officially marking the start of the Heavenly Empress selection. There were only two types of bowls. Drawing a red ball would place you in the red team, while picking a blue ball would place you in the blue team. This is a game of luck, and although it doesn't determine the final results, all past Heavenly Empresses have been from the blue team. I suppose picking a blue ball would be best, Baini thought, standing in line. The noise from the storytellers, who were eagerly watching, added to the tension. When you're done picking your ball, please exit through the middle gate, a man announced. Soon, it was Baini's turn to choose her ball. Once again, we have a new team forming. We've seen a lot of red balls so far. It's about time we see some blue. Let's see what this young lady will pick, 
a storyteller narrated. Baini approached the box, feeling tense. I need to calm down. Oh, which one should I pick? This one feels a bit strange, she thought, dipping her hand into the box and pulling out a red ball. She examined it closely. Bam Baini, red team. A man announced. Ah, I had a feeling it'd be a red one, Baini thought, slightly disappointed. Hear ye, hear ye. The notorious Lady Bam Baini picked red. The familiar storyteller announced, catching Baini's attention. I didn't know that fool was here too. Is he ever going to stop? She thought, clenching her fists in frustration. Baini, did you pick your ball? Dongi called, running over. Are you blue or red? I'm red, Baini replied. Really? I picked red too. Dongi exclaimed. Ah, we're on the same team then. We are. I feel so fortunate. Baini said excitedly as they held hands. Oh my. Woon Jiosil, the winner of the preliminary match, picked blue. Another storyteller announced, drawing Baini's attention. I heard Hei Orium picked blue too, Dongi whispered to Baini. Is that so? Does that mean the new heavenly empress will be from the blue team? Baini asked, curious. Oh, Jio Seal. Congratulations on picking blue. I'm so happy for you, Baini said excitedly, hurrying over to congratulate Jio Seal. Congratulations, Lady Jio Seal, Dongi said happily. I just chose whatever was in my hand, and it happened to be blue, Jio Seal said, sounding nonchalant. The storytellers are really making a fuss, aren't they? But good for you. Blue's a strong team. I'm a bit jealous, Baini replied cheerfully. Oh, by the way, I picked red, and so did Dongi. Oh, you're both on the same team? Jio Seal asked, her tone colder. Yes. Did you eat yet? Baini asked. No, I don't have anyone to eat with, Jio Seal replied. I thought so. Let's go to the cafeteria and get some noodles, Baini suggested warmly. Just then, Hey Orium approached. Ah, there you are, Dong Dong. How did it go? She asked. Oh, Orium. Everyone, this is Orium, Dongi said excitedly. Pleased to meet you both, Lady Jioseal and Lady Baini, Orium greeted with a smile and a wave. Orium, you chose blue, right? I picked red. I'm on the same team as Baini, Dongi told her. Is that so? That must mean this year's Heavenly Empress will come from the red team, Orium said happily. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you too, but people are staring at us right now, Baini cut in, noticing the attention they were drawing from the other ladies. Come to think of it, I'm standing with the top three participants. I should brag about this later, Baini thought, giggling to herself. You made it to the top 102, Baini, Dongi praised. Yep. I barely made it though, I came in 98th place, Baini replied excitedly. Hmm. That's higher than I thought. You must have been lucky, Jio Seal remarked. Blue team. Red team. Those who have finished drawing their balls should go to their designated areas, someone announced. Already? They won't let us rest, huh? You didn't even get to eat yet, Jio Seal, Baini said, concerned. They'll be handing out desserts in an hour. Let's go to our teams. I'll make sure Lady Jio Seal eats something, Orium said, reassuring her calmly. All right. See you later, then, they said, bidding each other farewell as they went to their designated teams. In the East Building, the Red Team gathered. Each lady approached a table with attendants. By knee was handed a piece of paper. Hmm, what should I write? She wondered, holding her brush. Please use this cloth to pack the clothes you wore to Camellia Hall. Write your home address, the recipient's name, and a short message on this piece of paper. You'll have space to write one or two sentences, a man instructed, holding her uniform. Hmm, what a dilemma, Baini thought before hurrying to write. Please head to the main yard if you've submitted your clothing, a man announced. That should do, Baini said, tagging her uniform. At the main yard, the ladies assembled before the judges. Blue team, line up on the right. Red team, line up on the left, a voice instructed. As the participants shifted into their positions, another voice cut through the murmurs. Quiet, everyone. The man continued, his tone solemn. The competition has now officially begun. The preliminary match yesterday was held to inspect your basic abilities. 
The competition will continue until we have a winner. Your scores will be composed of the following, 30 points from the popularity poll by the celestial beings, 10 points from His Majesty, the Heavenly Emperor, and 60 points from Her Majesty, the Heavenly Empress Dowager. For the sake of diversity, we've organized various types of matches. The two finalists will compete against each other in the finals, and the winner will become the Heavenly Empress. That man is Orium's father, Dongyi whispered to Bai Ni, nodding towards one of the judges. Ah, that's what I thought. So he must be the head of House Hei, Bai Ni replied gently. The man, now identified as Lord Hei, continued, As I'm sure you all know, there is only one heir of the late Heavenly Emperor, who passed away twenty years ago. Hence, this Heavenly Empress selection is an important historical event that will decide the future of our realm for the next thousands of years. As such, Her Majesty, the Heavenly Empress Dowager, will be serving as a judge starting from the next match. So do your best to demonstrate your abilities. Even your breathing must be done with the utmost care and sincerity. At that moment, the Heavenly Empress Dowager stepped forward, her presence commanding instant silence and drawing everyone's attention. Lord Hay announced that the first official match would begin after lunch, instructing everyone to head back and prepare. Wow, I'll be seeing the Heavenly Empress Dowager. My heart is still racing, Baini said, placing a hand on her chest. I can't believe Her Majesty is going to be one of the judges. They're really putting a lot of effort into the selection process, she added, looking a bit tense. Dongyi, let's go have lunch, she said touching her. Baini, I'm going to talk to the other girls for a moment before heading to the cafeteria, Dongyi replied. Ah, all right, sure, Baini responded, watching her leave. She thought, Dongyi seems nervous too. She noticed Orium's gaze fixed on the podium. That's Lady Orium. She must be looking at her father, but Lord Hay isn't glancing her way at all. She really doesn't resemble him much. Baini then spotted Jayoseel behind Orium and smiled, waving at her, but Jayoseel turned away, leaving Baini startled. Is she angry at me? She wondered. Oh, who's that? She thought, recognizing the man she had run into earlier. Isn't he the military officer I crashed into near the stone wall? Recalling how he taunted her by calling her a bear, Bai Ni clenched her fist. I'll teach him a good lesson next time, she muttered, glaring at him. Bai Ni, I didn't know you were interested in Own too, Dong Yi said, revealing the man's name. Huh? When did you get here, Dong Yi? Bai Ni asked, turning to her. Just now, Dong Yi replied. Did you just say his name is Own? How do you know his name? Bai Ni inquired. I'm sure all the ladies here do. He's a dashing young man and a very competent sergeant in the Imperial Guard, Dongyi explained. Suddenly, Own looked their way and began walking towards them. Ark! He's coming this way. I should run, Baini thought, feeling tense now that she knew his identity. How may I help you, sir? She asked, stuttering. Hmm, are you planning to hibernate soon, Miss Bear? That must be why you're fleeing from humans, right? Own teased. Well, I have no reason to associate with you since we're practically strangers, Baini replied. Strangers, I thought we were quite close, Own responded. What a ridiculous thing to say. Baini shot back. Considering how intimate we were with each other earlier, I don't think it's all that unreasonable, Own said, smirking. Dongyi, now red-faced, watched their interaction. Um, excuse me, she said, drawing Own's attention. We've prepared all the supplies you requested. They'll be distributed this afternoon when the new rooms are assigned, he tells her. Already? I only asked if it was possible. Thank you so much for going through the trouble, Dongyi replied. Own bowed before turning back to Bai Ni. Just by looking at his face, I can tell he wants to tease me. He probably thinks I'm getting my hopes up, Bai Ni thought to herself. I'd rather mock myself than be jeered at by him. Oh, you see, bears tend to be very optimistic creatures, she said cheerfully, closing her eyes with a forced smile. Did I go too far? She wondered, sneaking a peek at him. Own laughed loudly, causing Bai Ni to turn red. He leaned in slightly, his face close to hers. Not only do you stand out, but you're also quite fortunate. Red's one of my favorite colors, you know. I'll see you again next time, he said, walking away. Who cares if red's your favorite color? She muttered awkwardly as he left. What was that, Baini? Dongyi asked, 
rushing over to her. How do you and Owen know each other? She asked, her eyes sparkling with curiosity. Oh, we just met by chance, Biney replied. Oh my goodness. I didn't know you were that close with Owen. Is this what they call a pair destined to be together? Dong Yi asked excitedly. Actually, it might be the start of an ill-fated relationship, Bai Ni thought to herself, feeling sour. In the study of the Heavenly Emperor's mother, she sifted through the candidate's profiles. This name. I don't need to see this one, she muttered, shoving a scroll aside in anger. Bring me some more tea, she requested, picking up another scroll. As someone entered the room, the maids bowed deeply. You may all excuse yourselves, the newcomer instructed. The heavenly emperor's mother smiled as she sipped her tea. How are you enjoying your little game of pretending to be a sergeant of the imperial guard? Those young ladies would faint from shock if they knew that the heavenly emperor himself was walking among them, she remarked, referring to Owen, whose true identity was the heavenly emperor. I must say, it's rather exciting to search for my future wife this way, he replied with a smile. Ah, does that mean you've found a lady you're fond of? His mother asked. Owen paused, noticing her hand resting on a particular scroll. It looks like you've already made your decision, mother, he observed. I did select a couple of potential candidates. It seems the new heavenly empress will be one of the top eleven participants. Although, I was skimming through the top one hundred just in case, she explained. But you never know if the other ladies may also be a good match for me. Own pointed out. Your Majesty, do you think gold won't shine just because it's covered in mud? Once you place it in water, we'll know right away whether it's gold or just a rock. All that's left is to decide which one is the more valuable piece of gold, she told him. This is exactly why I've disguised myself as a sergeant, Own replied. I understand you wish to observe all the young ladies, but you mustn't make the mistake of spending all your time rummaging through heaps of pebbles, neglecting the true gems, she cautioned. Don't worry, mother. I won't be that careless when looking for my wife, Own assured her with a sigh. I know you won't. However, remember that the Heavenly Empress is not just your wife. She is the mother of the entire Heavenly Realm. And don't forget that it is I, the Heavenly Empress Dowager, I am the one who ultimately decides who will hold that title, she reminded him. I am well aware of that. But what will you do if I refuse to marry the woman you've chosen for me? Own asked boldly. You are a manifester, said to appear once every five thousand years. Please understand that my only desire is to find an excellent wife for my son, his mother replied calmly. I'm saying this because you're choosing based solely on abilities. I can't spend the rest of my life with a woman I don't love, Own said. The heavenly empress dowager's hand trembled as she clutched her teacup her anger barely contained. Tell me, since when have members of the imperial family married for love? She asked. Mother, you must know that compatibility between the heavenly emperor and empress is crucial. Marital intimacy is key to amplifying rack, which will positively influence the next generation, Own explained. Yes, I know. I already yielded to you once, didn't I? Why are you being like this? It's not as if you'd listen to me if I tried to force you, she said, her voice softening. You are my mother, so I don't wish to argue with you before the heavenly empress selection, Own replied. And I'm grateful for that. So, has any young lady caught your attention yet? His mother inquired. A lady who caught my attention? Own mused, reflecting on her question. Suddenly, Biney's face flashed through his mind, and a grin spread across his face. I'm afraid not he told his mother. Moments later, the contestants gathered at the arena for the first match. It's almost my turn. They didn't even tell us what this match is about. I'm so nervous my heart feels like it's about to burst, Biney thought, trembling slightly as she waited. All right, next sixty participants, please stand up and get prepared, a man announced. Oh no. We're up next already? Biney thought anxiously. They were instructed to head toward the entrance. Stand by, everyone. You'll be entering the arena in about thirty seconds. Please get ready, the man instructed. Take deep breaths, compose yourself. The heavenly empress dowager is here as a judge, so be sure to smile, Bai Ni reminded herself, trying to calm her nerves. My body feels like a boulder. I'm so nervous I can't move a single step, she thought, standing in front of the door as it opened. 
No, there's no need to be so anxious. I can do this, she reassured herself, clenching her fists. All right. You may head inside now, the man instructed. This is just the beginning. I've got this. Bai Ni told herself. Inside the arena, the storytellers cheered as the girls entered. Please stand on one square each. Hurry up and find your positions. And wait for further instructions once you've done so, the organizer instructed. Standing in her position, Bai Ni glanced at the judges. The judges are watching us from the audience this time. It's so nerve-wracking, she thought. But I can't believe the Heavenly Empress Dowager is actually watching us. Her eyes drifted to the Heavenly Empress Dowager. If I become the Heavenly Empress, that means I'll also be the Heavenly Empress Dowager one day. But I doubt I could ever be half as beautiful, elegant, and dignified as Her Majesty. No, I can't even imagine anyone referring to me as the Heavenly Empress, she thought, shaking her head. A grade 7 civil servant suits me much better, she concluded. Suddenly, white curtains were lowered around each girl, blocking them from seeing one another. What's this? A screen? I can't see any of the other girls, Baini thought, noticing that the only things visible were the heavenly empress dowager and an hourglass. The presenter cleared his throat and announced, You have ten minutes to complete the mission. All you need to do is create an oriental melon within the allotted time. The presenter announced. Wait. We have to make an oriental melon within ten minutes? Baini thought, panic rising. No, it's impossible. I can't do that in such a short period of time. Aren't they being a little too harsh from the start? She thought. Please get ready. We're about to begin, the presenter continued, stunning her. Oh no. I need to get prepared. What should I do? I don't have much time. All right. Let me decide what to prioritize first, she thought rapidly. Should I focus on perfecting the external form? Or should I concentrate on its flavor? Wait, I can't do that. I'm not skilled enough to create flavors and scents, she was worried, but her thoughts were cut off by the presenter's next announcement. Ladies, play the rack. Manifest and play the rack now, he instructed. I was told that the beginning is the most important part of a manifestation. Do oriental melons grow on trees? What was it again? Wait, that's not it. They grow on vines, Baini recalled, analyzing her options. She began to play her rack, first manifesting a vine. Good. I just need one, she thought as she carefully manifested an oriental melon bud. Now, I have to make it grow larger, she said to herself, calmly using her rack to mature the melon. You have three minutes left, the presenter announced. What? Bai Ni almost shouted, tension gripping her. All right, calm down. I still have 180 seconds left. I'll be cutting it close, she thought, trying to steady her nerves. I shouldn't merely focus on the size. I need the inner flesh to be fresh and firm so that it sounds crisp when bitten. I also need moist, tiny seeds that burst with juice. Oh, I mustn't forget to leave some space between the flesh and the seeds as well. Most importantly, it should look appetizing, she reminded herself, focusing intensely. Focus, bam by knee, she urged herself, manifesting her rack to bring out the melon's ideal characteristics. Yes. I did it, she finally said as the oriental melon took shape. She had twenty seconds left. Oh, the flavor. It tastes too bland. How do I add flavor? She thought, feeling the pressure. Then she remembered her mother's words. When adding flavor, think about the person you'd like to give it to. With that in mind, Bai Ni quickly played her rack again, infusing the melon with a more appealing taste. Time's up. Cease all manifestations, the presenter announced, raising the curtains. Huh? That's surprising, Bai Ni thought as she glanced at the melons the other contestants had made. Bai Ni didn't expect her melon to stand out, especially after seeing the poor quality of the others. Place your creation on this tray. Please, a man instructed, holding out the tray. She complied, feeling nervous. Ah, looks like we have a talented participant here. It probably tastes bland since there's no scent, but she is incredibly skilled, one judge commented, examining Bainese melon. Another judge cut the melon open, exclaiming, Oh! She even managed to form such detailed insides in such a short time. Indeed. She's truly outstanding, 
added another, as they all smiled approvingly at her work. Biney blushed, relieved that the judges seemed pleased. Her heart pounded as her melon was presented to the heavenly empress dowager. The empress quickly glanced at the fruit before turning away, causing Biney's excitement to falter. No way. Oh, that's right. To her majesty, I'm just the daughter of the one who led her husband to death. I shouldn't expect her to give me a good score, she thought, feeling a wave of sadness and disappointment. Time is up for the evaluation. Judges, please raise your scoreboards, the presenter announced, snapping her out of her thoughts. Biney's eyes widened. Huh? I got first place? The other judges gave me significantly higher scores than the others. Even Her Majesty. Biney's heart swelled with pride. She must be someone who doesn't let emotions affect professional matters. I can't believe I won first place. My parents will be so proud. She thought, filled with relief and excitement. Backstage, Owen stood listening to the judge's feedback. A staff member approached him. Your Majesty, here are the oriental melons made by the previous group, she said, presenting a sample. Own examined the fruits, unimpressed. Hmm. The results of this match fall short of my expectations. Most of these fruits look horrible. Then he noticed Bainee's melon. He took one and dismissed the staff. Even a radish would taste better than this. It's original, but it lacks flavor. She tried to add it but stopped, likely knowing it takes natural talent to create flavor and scent. How bold of her to attempt this in front of the heavenly empress dowager. Miss Bear is quite impressive, he thought, leaving the arena with a faint smile. I'm glad I made it, Biney said quietly, breathing a sigh of relief as she exited the hall. Outside, she noticed Own standing at a distance, his eyes fixed on her. Isn't that Own? What's with everyone? She thought, observing how the ladies around her blushed at the sight of him. Do they not realize he enjoys teasing people? Or do they just find his looks so charming that they overlook his behavior? Feeling awkward, she watched as Own lifted his hand in a gesture toward her. What does he want now? She wondered. She waved back at him with a forced smile, but inside, she was irritated. Top ten, Own mouthed slowly so she could read his lips, then held up four fingers. My oriental melon made it to the top ten? By knee asked herself, keeping her expression calm. She noticed him raising his outer coat slightly. What's he implying now? She wondered. Your melons in the top ten for appearance, he told her, amused. I already knew that, Biney thought, feeling a spark of annoyance. She shot him a glare, which only made him laugh. Her face warmed in response, and she quickly walked past him, trying to hide her reaction. No, my face is hot because of the news, not because of him. I need to stay away from Owen she told herself, shaking her head. How does Own even know the rankings? Is he listening to the storyteller's transmissions? He must have too much time on his hands, she thought, resuming her walk. Despite everything, she felt relieved. At least I got a good score this time. But I can't forget the heavenly empress dowager's cold expression. There are so many strong contestants, it might be hard for me to make it to the finals with just effort. Talent will be the decisive factor in the end. But I still have a chance. I'll do my best and go as far as I can, she resolved. What matters is that I did well today, she thought, stretching calmly. Soon it was dinner time that I rarely get to eat food like this back home, but I can't seem to muster an appetite. Is it because of what happened earlier? Biney wondered, feeling sad as she picked at her meal. Earlier, before dinner, she had seen her name on the bulletin board among the top eight candidates. Seriously? I can't believe I'm in eighth place. That means I'm one of the top rankers. She thought, still processing the news. Jayoseel came in fourteenth place. She's always had trouble with time limits, Biney mused. Some of the ladies had cried, but most of the Nolianjin members passed. Lady Orium and Dongyi ranked first and second. Amidst the crowd, Dongyi spotted Baini. She winked and smiled cheerfully. As Baini searched for Jio Seal, she eventually found her by the lake. Approaching her calmly, Baini said, Let's eat together. Leave me alone, Baini. Just go and have dinner, Jio Seal replied coldly, still leaning down, staring at her reflection in the water. Baini insisted, but then Jio Seal asked, 
Are we on the same side, Baini? What? Baini responded, confused. You said we'd eat together when we're on the same team. That's what you told me this morning, Jayo Seal reminded her. Jayo Seal, Baini called her name, puzzled. Didn't you say we're only allowed to eat with those from the same residence hall? Why are you contradicting yourself? Jayo Seal asked, suddenly standing up, facing Baini with a fierce expression. Is it because you scored higher than me? Is that why you sound so triumphant? She demanded, her anger startling Baini. Baini hesitated but then asked, Jayo Seal, do you really mean that? Be honest with me. She said reaching out and holding Jayo Seal's arms. Jayo Seal turned her head away, tears welling up in her eyes. Do you see me as your enemy now? Do you hate me because it seems like I did better than you? Baini asked gently. It's just... Everyone laughed at me when the results were announced, Jayo Seal said, shaking her head as she cried. Oh, so that's why she's upset, Baini thought, understanding her friend's pain. They're all strong competitors, Jayo Seal. We've only had two matches so far. With your skills, I'm sure you'll be one of the two remaining finalists, Baini reassured her, holding her hands. But, why does everyone keep whispering and laughing behind my back? Jayo Seal asked. Well, that's because you're a genius. Remember what my father said? Popularity, victory, and wealth always attract poison, Baini explained. Poison? Jayo Seal repeated, confused. Yes the poison that's also known as jealousy. People will be envious of you, even in the future, Baini told her. But why isn't it like that for her? Jayo Seal asked quietly. Who's her? Baini asked, puzzled as they sat together. Dong. You know, Jayo Seal replied. You mean Dongi? That's because she and Lady Orium are from one of the most prestigious families in the heavenly realm. Compared to them, we come from less important families. I'm sure that's why others look down on us, Baini explained softly. True, I suppose I should be thankful I'm not in your position. At least I don't have to worry about the heavenly empress dowager scorning me because I'm a bam, she added. Baini thought, feeling a pang of guilt. I know Jayo Seal didn't mean any harm by that, but I've never felt this hurt before. She considered how Jayo Seal must have received a new name tag too. Since we're on different teams now, I don't know anything about what's happening with the blue team anymore. Does that mean I'll only see her during the matches since we eat separately too? Baini wondered, still staring at her food. No, I'm actually relieved I won't have to see her for a while. Why do I feel this way about my own friend? It's just not right, she thought, troubled. You'll be assigned your rooms in just a moment, someone announced, startling her. I suppose I should be thankful I'm not in her shoes. At least I don't have to worry about the heavenly empress dowager's scorn, Baini reminded herself. Never mind. I'll just focus on what I have to do now, she decided, getting up and heading out of the cafeteria. The contestants from the red team assembled in front of their residence building. I'm exhausted. What a long day, Baini thought to herself. Staff members stood in front of them, each beside a box. There were seventeen boxes, which meant seventeen rooms in total. One room fits 45 people, so that's 765 participants. It must be the same for the blue team, meaning there are 1,530 participants left. About half have already been eliminated. The Heavenly Emperor is definitely merciless when it comes to disqualifying contestants. They don't even get time to cry over the results. His Majesty seems to be ruthless, thorough, and intimidating. I wonder what he looks like, Baini wondered. Next. Stop daydreaming. Chop, chop. One of the organizers shouted, snapping her back to reality. Yes, sir. She responded, moving forward to pick a slip from a box. Dongi picked her slip from this box earlier, she thought as she uncovered the contents. Please head to the fourth room of the East Hall, the man instructed after seeing her number. I hope I was assigned the same room as Dongi, she hoped as she made her way to the room. Upon entering, she saw Dongi, and they both smiled at each other. Baini, we're roommates, Dongi said excitedly, as they held hands. Yes, we are. I'm so happy, Baini replied. The other ladies whispered among themselves, noticing their friendly interaction. 
As expected, the others aren't too pleased with me being here. I'm sure Dongyi is the only reason they're not openly expressing their dislike. What a relief. Things would have been quite bothersome if I'd been assigned a different room, she thought, keeping her composure. Later that night, Bai Ni found it difficult to sleep. Everyone must be exhausted. They're already fast asleep. I should try to get some rest too, she told herself, closing her eyes. Suddenly, she heard the same flute melody from the previous night. Huh? Isn't that the flute I heard yesterday? Who's playing it so late? Now I can't sleep, she thought, her eyes still closed. But I have to admit, it sounds beautiful, as if my soul is melting. It's calming and makes me feel less tired. Where is it coming from? No, I must sleep to compete with a clear head tomorrow, she grumbled, trying to shake the tune from her mind. I can't take it anymore, she finally said, getting up from bed. Before she knew it, Bai Ni found herself outside the residence building. Wow, I feel like I just teleported, she thought. I can't tell if this is a dream or reality. How strange, she murmured, gazing up at the moon. I should start looking now. I think the sound was coming from around here, Bai Ni thought as she walked, feeling a mix of excitement and curiosity. Suddenly, she noticed Lady Orium standing outside with her eyes closed, seemingly enjoying the melody. Isn't that Lady Orium? She must be listening to the tune as well. I should just leave. I don't want to disturb her, Bai Ni thought. Thanks to wandering around last night, I'm more familiar with this place. I should take my time, she mused, whistling softly as she headed back. On her way, Bai Ni stumbled upon an unfamiliar entrance. Peeking inside, she was startled to see the same tiger she had previously encountered near the lake. The tiger turned its gaze toward her, causing her to jolt in fear. You again? You just won't give up. Not only are you curious, but you're also bold and persistent, the animal spoke, shocking her. Bai Ni woke up screaming, beads of sweat on her forehead. Oh, is it morning already? Was that really all a dream? She wondered as she got out of bed. I should go wash up first, she decided, sliding her door open. Oh, Bai Ni, you woke up early. Dongi exclaimed, seeing her. Dongi, did you happen to hear a flute playing last night? Bai Ni asked. I did. It was absolutely mesmerizing. I've never heard a manifestation like that before, Dongi responded, her excitement evident. So it wasn't just a dream. Someone really did play the flute. I must be an idiot if I can't even tell the difference between a dream and reality, Bai Ni thought, feeling confused. Weren't you curious about who manifested that sound? Bai Ni asked Dongi. Of course I was. But I just ignored it and went to sleep. I wanted to be in my best state today, Dongi explained. I see, Bai Ni replied. Suddenly, there was commotion outside. What's going on? The imperial soldiers are moving in groups, a lady pointed out, noticing the soldiers marching outside. The women rushed out to get a closer look climbing the fence to peek over. It's true. What's happening? Bai Ni wondered aloud as she saw the soldiers, each holding a spear as if on high alert. Isn't Haiyang Bai Hall that way? Why are there so many soldiers? She asked, puzzled. Apparently, someone arrived at Haiyang Bai Hall at 4 a.m. My bed was near the window, and I heard some noises last night, a girl said, yawning. Really? Judging by the tight security, I'm guessing some important guest arrived, another girl speculated. But they didn't even go this far for the Heavenly Empress Dowager. Who could be more important than Her Majesty? The Heavenly Emperor? Someone else questioned. Oh my! Does that mean we finally get to see His Majesty? Another girl suggested, her voice filled with excitement. Most likely not, Baini thought, remaining composed. I think this has something to do with today's match. But what could lead them to dispatch armed soldiers like this? She wondered, her curiosity growing. Ladies, please assemble with your roommates, the presenter announced. Soon, the red team gathered and walked out of their residence, excitement buzzing among them. We're going to Haiyang Bai Hall. One girl said happily. Finally. I was looking forward to this, another replied. Bai Ni observed the lively atmosphere. Everyone seems excited, she thought. When they reached Haiyang Bai Hall, Baini's eyes lit up. 
So this is Haiyang Bai Hall. I heard this is where tea is served to foreign diplomats and honored guests. It's as beautiful as they said, she thought, feeling her cheeks warm with excitement. I wonder who we'll be meeting. Could it be the cold and stern delegation from the underworld? Or maybe the Greek and Roman gods, the celebrities of the mythological realm? Whoever it is, I'm so excited, she mused, her eyes glowing with anticipation. The arrival of the blue team caught her attention, and she noticed Jio Seal looking sad. Bai Ni recalled their conversation from the previous night. Jio Seal never answered my question. The only things that have changed are our outfits and rooms, but something feels off in our relationship. And it's not just us. I can see that everyone's become more competitive, they're all watching each other closely. Before, it felt like we were on a field trip together. Now, it's as if a wall has been placed between Jio Seal and me. Will things go back to normal again when the Heavenly Empress election ends? She wondered. Inside Haiyang Bai Hall, in the waiting area, the organizer coughed, drawing everyone's attention as the match was about to start. A match will be held today and tomorrow, he began. The scores for those matches will be cumulative. Depending on the total number of points you receive, it will be decided whether or not you'll advance to the next round. This brings me to today's match, you are to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with an evil being, he announced, leaving them stunned. Something extraordinary has happened. The candidates might all be devoured today. Nothing like this has ever occurred in the history of our realm, the storytellers shouted, their voices filled with confusion. Evil beings? This will cause a huge uproar throughout the heavenly realm, Baini thought, her mind racing. Now I understand why it was the heavenly emperor, not the heavenly empress dowager, who proclaimed this selection. In the western world, evil beings were often referred to as demons, while celestial beings were known as angels. As eternal foes of celestial beings, evil beings were creatures that thrived on evil. They were also the ones who assassinated the late heavenly emperor. And now we're expected to have a conversation with them? Bai Ni wondered. I understand that diplomacy is part of the heavenly empress's duties, but isn't this taking it a bit too far? She thought. How can we have a discussion with an evil being? A girl from the red team shouted, her voice filled with tension. I agree. It's an evil being we're talking about. This is absolutely unreasonable, another added, panic evident in her tone. I've never even seen one in my life, a girl murmured, her fear apparent. Hush. There's no need to be scared, as we've only chosen the naturalized ones. The organizer interjected. And please note that there's nothing else planned for today after the meeting with the evil beings, he announced. How could they expect us to do anything else afterward when everyone's panicking like this? Baini thought, trying to calm herself. I knew the match wouldn't be easy, she said inwardly. The faster you finish today's meeting with the evil beings, the more time you'll have to prepare for tomorrow's match, the organizer continued. As for tomorrow, you will be presenting a duet with a partner. Each group will consist of one member from the blue team and another from the red team. Wait, does that mean we're forming a group with the opposite team? A girl from the red team asked. Correct, the organizer replied, reading from a scroll. The third match is a duet with the enemy, where one member from each team will form a single group. After choosing your partner, you must also decide what to manifest for tomorrow's match. So let me summarize it for you all once again, the organizer said. There will be a duet of two participants in each group, starting tomorrow morning at 10. Each group will be composed of one member from the blue team and one from the red team. You are free to choose your partner. You have 10 minutes to complete this task. You may manifest whatever you wish. So give it your all. Only 10 minutes? What can we possibly accomplish in that short of time? Baini wondered, her mind spinning with the challenge ahead. We don't have enough time to manifest anything grand, she thought. We can't just create something carelessly and leave it incomplete. Most importantly, we must reach an agreement with the member from the opposite team. There's just not enough time. What should I do? She sighed in frustration but took some comfort in knowing they had a place to practice. Ladies, please get ready for your meeting with the evil being at once, the presenter announced. Suddenly, all the judges began leaving Haiyang Bai Hall, heading towards Camellia Hall. Wait a minute. 
that means members from different teams will be combined into a single group. But they didn't tell us the most important part, Baini thought, feeling tense. I have a question, sir. Dongi called out, startling the judges as they paused. I understand that we have to partner with someone from the opposite team. But what happens if one group passes the test? Will both members advance to the next match, or will one of us be disqualified? The judges hesitated, clearly uncomfortable with the question. Well, I'm afraid we can't disclose that, one judge finally replied. Please tell us. It's for the sake of fairness, Dong Yi insisted. How impudent of you to demand an answer. What is your name? Lord Hay demanded, stepping forward. Dong Yi went silent, unable to reply. The fact that you can't reveal your name means you know this isn't something to complain about, he shouted furiously. My name is Dong Yi, she muttered quietly. Speak up. Did your parents fail to teach you to state your name properly? Lord Hay yelled, causing her to flinch. My lord, my name is Bai Ni from House Bam, Bai Ni said suddenly, startling the girls. Bam Bai Ni? She's that infamous Bam Bai Ni? How shameless of her to speak up in front of the judges, some girls murmured amongst themselves. I didn't know we had a contestant from House Bam, whispered another. For the third match, we won't be competing in groups composed of members from the same team. This means we'll be partnering with an opponent. We need to know whether our partner is a competitor we must take down or an ally we must cooperate with. Only then can we prepare accordingly, Bai Ni asked politely. Even dealing with that is a part of the test, Lord Hay replied curtly. But Bai Ni began, only to be cut off. You think this competition was hosted for entertainment? We're here to select the Empress of the Heavenly Realm, the mother of our lands. All these uncertainties and risks are part of the competition. You must learn how to think for yourself, exercise self-control, and do your best to compete. The faster you finish your conversation with the evil beings, the more time you'll have to practice your duet, he declared before the judges all walked out on the contestants. We should head back to our places, Dong Yi told Bai Ni. What should I do? Bai Ni wondered. The result of the next match will depend on who becomes my partner. Should I team up with Jio Seal? No. I'm sure many other girls would want to be partners with her. But what about me? Would anyone want to team up with me? She thought, unsure of what to do. Well, I'll think about that later. First things first, she thought, making her way to the contest arena. The girls waited in front of the contest arena at Haiyang Bai Hall. The presence of Imperial soldiers added to the tense atmosphere. Most of the Imperial soldiers are here. The atmosphere is very tense, Baini thought, observing the tight security. Suddenly, she spotted Own. It's Own, the sergeant of the Imperial Guard. Everyone's very serious. It's making me even more nervous. What should I do? I've never met an evil being before, she thought, her anxiety growing. Bai Ni recalled her father's lessons. Evil beings are cunning and treacherous. They're skilled in trickery and can be kind toward us celestial beings. They have the ability to contaminate our minds without us knowing, so you must always be on your guard if you ever run into one of them, her father had warned. Yes, that's what father said. But what should be the topic of our conversation? Bai Ni pondered, feeling unsure. She glanced at the other girls and noticed they were just as terrified as she was. Turning to Dongi, she asked, Dongi, will you be teaming up with Lady Orium? No, we both thought that would be cheating, so we decided to find different partners, Dongi whispered back. Huh? I suppose the strongest contestants don't have to be so desperate to win. No, they're actually wise. After all, we don't know if the judges will disqualify one or both contestants from a group, Baini thought. Bai Ni, thank you so much for supporting me earlier, Dong Yi said, placing her head on Bai Ni's shoulder. The two smiled at each other, lifting their spirits. Next group. Please head down quickly, the organizer announced. I'll be off first. Good luck, Bai Ni. Dong Yi said, waving as she made her way into the hall. As expected of Dong Yi. Look at all those storytellers following her, Bai Ni thought noticing the influx of storytellers trailing Dongi into the hall. Next group. Please hurry up and head inside. The organizer soon called again. It's proceeding faster than I thought. 
This is the first time I'm meeting an evil being, but there's nothing to be nervous about. I've got this. Bai Ni told herself, trying to boost her confidence. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. If you enjoyed what you watched, please consider liking, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. Your comments mean the world to us and help us improve. The next episode promises even more excitement and unexpected twists so stay tuned as we embark on this thrilling journey together. Keep the anticipation alive and we'll catch you in the next episode.